Fleisch. An application for a patent on pigs. Es geht ganz einfach um die Einforderung von geistigen, von Lizenzen auf geistiges Eigentum. Are pigs an invention or the common property of all of us? Who owns the pig? Es geht um die Patentierung, um die Privatisierung von Gensequenzen. Genes on pig DNA, decoded and described by the Monsanto Corporation of America. But these genes have always been there. Will we soon be forced to pay fees for nature's heritage? It is a very, very big business plan, and it includes control of food uh, from the seed and the field to the fork. The politically charged patent is soon to go into effect worldwide. Christoph Zimmer, a farmer from Swabia, sees his livelihood in jeopardy. Is he soon to be prohibited from breeding pigs because their genetic material belongs to a corporation? Christoph Zimmer is now traveling through Germany with patent applications for pig genes in his briefcase. He wants to shake up the other farmers to protest against the sellout of life, as he calls it. Wie kann denn jemand ein Patent auf Dinge beanspruchen, die es schon gibt? Da kann er gleich ähm, ein Patent auf Sonnenlicht äh, beanspruchen oder dass man hier zum Kinderkriegen ein Patent braucht und nicht dann Lizenzgebühren abführen muss. The discontented farmer believes that these piglets might also be affected by the patents the American agricultural concern Monsanto is applying for because the genes cited therein are not an invention, but already exist in almost all pigs. As proof, Zimmer wants to collect some hair for a DNA test. So here we have the gene in the Haarwurzel. And Monsanto behauptet jetzt, when this gene here is vorhanden ist, then sind the tiere besonders büxig, besonders fleischstark. It is einfach so, Zu wem ich auch gehe, da glaubt man das nicht. Warum sollte irgendjemand hier kommen können und ein Recht auf etwas geltend machen, das eigentlich schon lange den Landwirten gehört oder der gesamten Gesellschaft gehört? Dann deshalb denke ich, ist einfach wichtig, dass man sich jetzt auf die Barrikaden stellt und man einfach auch sein Recht an seinen eigenen Tieren hat. Das ist die Existenz von mir und eigentlich von ganz vielen Landwirten hier in der Region auch. A field in Schwäbisch Hall is Farmer Zimmer's next destination. He wants to inform Marcus Betzelberg and his father Anz to breed pigs about the patent applications brewing in faraway America. Hello, Ernst. Hello, Marcus. Hello, the scientists at Monsanto claim in their application that certain pig genes promise more rapid flesh growth. If the patent is granted, Monsanto could in future also demand license fees for the Betzelberger's animals if this gene is naturally found in them and the farmers cannot prove that they didn't use Monsanto's patented breeding methods. Ja, das kann es im Prinzip nicht sein, dass unsere Tiere praktisch der Amerika amerikanische Konzern gehören. Und ja, wir im Prinzip die Tiere noch füttern dürfen und halten dürfen, aber die darüber entscheiden dürfen, was mit den Tieren passiert. Monsanto company headquarters in St. Louis, Missouri, heavily guarded like the maximum security wing of a prison. This is where the idea for a worldwide pig monopoly was born. In the lab, scientists are hard at work on an ongoing series of new patents. The goal is worldwide domination in the field of food production. An annual sales volume of more than 4 billion euros is realized here, up until now primarily by means of genetically engineered plants and seed. Diese Oligarchien der Weltkonzerne haben ganz wenige Menschen, ganz wenige Gruppen, die haben eine Macht heute, wie sie nie ein Kaiser, nie ein König, nie ein Papst in der Geschichte der Menschheit gehabt hat. Und Monsanto ist einer dieser Weltkonzerne, sehr effizient übrigens, unglaublich dynamisch, unglaublich vital. Das sind äh, Feudalherren neuesten Tippes. Monsanto began by manufacturing insecticides and later went on to genetically engineer the plants themselves for greater resistance. This allowed the plants to better tolerate Monsanto's own crop sprays. Of primary importance was that everything could be patented. 
patenting is all about control, and Monsanto is all about control. You know, they're already the number one seed company in the world, and they control those seeds through patents, through government monopolies, so they and only they can use those seeds. The common heritage of the world, the seeds of the world, are now owned primarily by one company that has them in monopoly. The American Patent Office, USPTO. This is where Monsanto has submitted its pig patents for approval. The patent authorities are not yet prepared to issue a statement, but the decision on whether to grant the patent could set the precedent for how the other 159 countries where the patent application has been submitted will decide. The major question remains whether life forms should be subject to patents at all. Patenting living organisms is, is, sort of, is settled case law here in the United States, um, and I do it for my clients every day. This allows companies like Monsanto to take up a key position in supplying vital resources, involving the control and manufacture of food products. Now they are setting their sights on the pig, which hasn't even been genetically engineered yet. It's a very broad patent that would grant, if, if it's accepted worldwide, would grant Monsanto control of a significant percentage of all the pigs in the world. And here's what's so critical. The patent isn't just for the pigs. It's for the pig's offspring. So Mother Nature works for Monsanto's profit. Every time pigs naturally reproduce, that is a violation of the patent that you would have to pay Monsanto for. In the Betzelberger stall in Swabia, Christoph Zimmer wants to obtain further DNA samples. In Europe, as well as in the United States, patents are not only being granted today for genetically engineered organisms, but also for naturally occurring animals, for example, lab animals. Every piglet in whose DNA inspectors find fattening gene markers could then be subject to licensing fees. How many of them are already affected? If there are too many, Zimmer says, the Betzelbergers might as well close down operations. A few pig bristles for the good cause. The farmers have never spared a thought for DNA structures. For decades, they simply crossbred according to appearance. Now, Christoph Zimmer only needs to find a lab willing to do the test. Not an easy task because even conducting this test infringes on patents owned by the American company. At the laboratory, it's best to remain anonymous because biotech companies like Monsanto have often sued for patent violations. This is big business. The worldwide market for pork is estimated at several billion euros. For Farmer Zimmer and his colleagues, a lot is riding on the test results. One of the most under-publicized actions of Monsanto with its patents is its persecution of American farmers. We have just completed a study that shows that they have threatened thousands of American farmers with lawsuits for violating their patents. That over 129 lawsuits have been filed by Monsanto against American farmers and they have reaped millions of dollars. And this is Monsanto coming in with its huge legal team, all of its power coming after a small farmer in South Dakota or Nebraska or in Indiana trespassing on their land, making up, in many cases, making up uh, uh, you know, lies about what these farmers were doing and not doing, persecuting them, and often driving them out of business. Uh, we have documented this. If this is what Monsanto will do to these farmers, imagine what they'll do to the farmers around the world. If this is what they're doing with their patents on crops, imagine what they'll do to, to farmers when they've patented the animals of the world as well. Ruined and convicted. Percy Schmeiser was sued by Monsanto for patent infringements worth several million dollars. They had discovered patented seed on the Canadian farmer's land. Schmeiser, 
a staunch opponent of genetic engineering, claimed that the seed had been carried onto his field via pollen from neighboring fields. But his protests were in vain. And it destroys the property of others, whether it's an organic farmer or conventional farmer like myself. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. No one should have the rights by introducing something into the environment that destroys the property of others. Hier Lizenzen einzufordern, ähm, diesen Anspruch erhebt Monsanto, wenn ein Landwirt bewusst ähm, diese Technologie und das geistige Eigentum missachtet. Heartland USA. Here, the corporation decides for itself which farmer they will take to court. Farmers that buy supplies from Monsanto have to sign a contract that precisely defines the type of crop sown and the methods used, and which prohibits the farmer from using his own harvest again as seed the next season. In addition, the farmer commits to purchasing new seed each year at a high price and must allow inspectors onto his land at any time. Jeffrey Smith, publicist and environmental activist, is collecting material in an effort to fight against the corporation's monopoly politics. He pays a visit to Dean Chambers in Iowa. The farmer reports that many of his colleagues would rather buy the expensive Monsanto technology than try to defend themselves. The cultivation of conventional plants that have not been genetically engineered has become practically impossible, he reports. You know, if I'm surrounded by, by, by corn and it's genetically modified, I could lose my crop to, to, uh, to, because the crop's genetically contaminated. And, and, again, and guess what? Then I can get sued by Monsanto for, for, for a breach of contract of uh, you know, trying to sell their seed. It's, it's insane. Critics speak of deliberate contamination. The fact is, a dramatic mixing is already taking place. And all the while, the risks of the new genetic technology for the environment and the consumer are still anything but clear. They said PCBs were safe. They weren't. They said Agent Orange was safe. It wasn't. And they're saying now that genetic engineering is safe. And it's not. Insecticides are a thing of the past. Monsanto is reinventing itself thanks to biotechnology. The official credo is food, health, hope. Headquarters has some ambitious goals. Well, Monsanto came, I think, to Arthur Anderson, and this is uh, to look at how they want to uh, position themselves. And they asked him, where do you want to be, Monsanto, in, I think, 20 or 30 years? And the answer was, we want to control the global food supply. Bill Witherspoon, a former manager from the genetic engineering industry, witnessed the company's ambitious master plan, as presented by a management consultant at a conference in Miami. The consultant believed that Monsanto would, through controlling intellectual property, patents, right, worldwide control, not have to worry about market share because there would be no one else to compete against them. So part of the discussion was how to remove competition because that's the only way that you're going to gain the kind of control that's necessary to dominate something as fundamental as the food chain. It wasn't about getting market share. It was about owning the whole thing. Farmers in Germany still have no idea how far the corporation is going to take its patent actions. Nonetheless, Christoph Zimmer is uneasy. The first laboratory results are in, and they are anything but encouraging. He wants to conduct further tests on the farm of Manfred Horlacher, who breeds an especially old race of pig. We have also in the field, we have also 
Und dann haben wir festgestellt, dass bis zu 75 Prozent von den Schweinen diese Gene enthalten haben, auf die Monsanto da das Patent erhebt. Not so easy obtaining a hair sample. As if the clever Zhao wants to keep the genetic secret behind her ample proportions to herself, she can't be lured out of her corner. Some soy meal comes to the rescue. At the Horlacher farm, the breeders are also finding Monsanto's pig patent hard to stomach. I think that this is only one reason to um, uh, an, um diese Landwirte abhängig zu machen von dem Konzern, wie es ja dann auch in dem Bereich Getreide oder Mais ja schon passiert, dass die Leute das Saatgut ausschließlich von Monsanto beziehen müssen, das Spritzmittel, das Düngemittel und so weiter und in eine totale Abhängigkeit kommen. Wenn die pro äh, Sau oder Ferkel, wo ein Stall verlässt, äh, Gebühren kassieren können, is this eigentlich eine Einnahmequelle, wo kein Ende finde? Ne? Entweder muss der Landwirt äh, aufhören oder, oder wenn er nicht aufhören will, dann muss er diese Gebühren bezahlen. In the United States and other countries, there are increasingly frequent reports of problems with genetic engineering. Harvests are failing, pests are returning, and allergies are multiplying. Monsanto has worked a new clause into its more recent contracts that forbids farmers from suing the company if genetically engineered seed should fail. In some American states, farmers who feed their pigs exclusively with genetically modified corn or soy have noticed a mysterious drop in their stock's fertility. Environmental activist Jeffrey Smith suspects that there is a connection between Monsanto's attempt to make a large-scale entry into the pig breeding business and the alleged problems with genetically modified feed. Hi, Jeffrey. Yeah, so I just got word from this person that knows someone that's raising heritage pigs in New York that they also had trouble giving birth when being fed certain varieties of genetically modified corn. And there's these people in Harlan, Iowa, that talk about their pigs as a result and not getting pregnant as a result of eating genetically modified corn. So we've got a rather um, sophisticated puzzle here we have to figure out. So. Obviously, I'm going to call them and uh, I'll visit them in, in Iowa that's nearby. Jeffrey Smith wants to get an impression of the situation at the farm of Leland Kaufman, who recently had to give up breeding pigs. He now purchases his livestock from a large breeder. So, cost 200 bucks to run. We went on for years, couldn't figure out what our conception rate problem was. We worked with a veterinary, spent $1,000 here, $1,000 there. Thought nobody can figure out what was going on. And we just finally give up. For a few years, we were planting 100% BT corn. And, you know, we didn't put two and two together till you start comparing the hog records when we were having conception rate problems and go back on the tickets when we bought seed corn, what years we bought 100% BT corn and then it all kind of coincided, fell into spot. We can't prove nothing, but it just very coincidental. I mean, we when we quit, we were down to 30% conception rate. It was thousands of dollars. I mean, until you sat down and really put feed costs to everything. I never did do that because it never come to a lawsuit where it isn't worth the time and effort. We've lost enough money with the conception rate. We don't need to follow up and spend more money trying to figure out we lost. We lost thousands, there's no doubt. Jeffrey Smith wants to know what the farmer believes is the impact of the whole thing on people, on consumers. Nobody knows, you know, or they're not telling us, or they don't want to tell us. The big companies probably don't want to tell us, so now, who's the guinea pig now?
When you insert a gene, the DNA can rearrange, can delete genes, turn them on permanently, turn them off, uh, can create mutations up and down the genome, and these can create unpredicted allergies or toxins or new diseases or nutritional problems. And in fact, Kirk Azevedo, a former Monsanto sales manager, recalls a discussion with a scientist working for the corporation on the subject of completely new protein patterns that appeared in a field test of genetically modified cotton. He said, well, in looking at the mother or the parent uh, product and looking at the other one, uh, the genetically modified one, uh, there are several different proteins, not just the one we want, but there's also a different spectrum of various lengths of protein in there too. And uh, that concerned me. I, uh, at the same time, was studying uh, prion diseases, or like mad cow type disease, that his uh, disease spread by proteins. So I said we should uh, destroy all the seed that uh, is being produced from these trials. And uh, when I presented that, I said, oh no, we're, we're not going to destroy the seed, we're going to feed it like we traditionally do. And that's where I had a big problem. If we're going to feed that seed that has proteins that are just new, I mean, just brand new we made, we don't know anything about, going into the food supply, what I got from Monsanto was, we're doing it everywhere else and we're going to do it here too. Imagine is the advertising slogan chosen by the biotech corporation. Imagine that the food Monsanto wants to supply to the world is not safe. What happens then? As a young manager, Azevedo, who brought a great deal of idealism to his job, was rapidly informed of the key corporate goals. Coming to uh, St. Louis and talking about uh, these ideals, I was pulled aside by one of the vice presidents, and he said, we're not necessarily about all these good things, reducing waste and feeding the world. We're about making money. From its headquarters in St. Louis, formerly the gateway to the West for frontier settlers, Monsanto hopes that American gene technology, patent-ready technology, will go on to conquer the world. Securing resources for itself is at the top of the company's political agenda, which is why it rapidly succeeded in pushing through approvals for the new products. The word was cooperation with government. And, uh, and regulatory agencies. Now, you have to read between the lines. What does cooperate mean? I mean, you know, cooperate means you shake hands. Enjoying an inside route to the corridors of power, Monsanto was able again and again to place employees in influential positions. Through Washington's revolving door, corporate players continually traded posts at the licensing authorities, later returning to high-paid board positions at the company. In the early 1990s, a blatant scandal played out behind the scenes at the nation's capital. It was about nothing less than the fundamental decision on whether genetically modified organisms should be allowed to enter the food supply at all. Several FDA inspectors expressed great concern after studying the test results. The government held back the papers in which they explained their reservations, however, as described by a critical FDA expert. He said that they believed it presented unique animal and human food safety concerns. Those were his words, unique food safety and animal safety concerns. And he emphasized that even a slight shift in a constituent of a plant that might not have an effect if humans ate it, because of the level at which they would consume the plant, he said that same plant can be a major constituent of the farm animal's diet and therefore it could create major problems for the animal and then for the human consumer of either the meat or the milk or the eggs of that animal. And that's why they felt that it was a very serious matter and had to be carefully tested. These tests were never conducted, however, just as the critical FDA memos were never publicized. Monsanto had managed to place its own man in a key post at one of the authorities. Gene technology was green-lighted. This, I believe, is one of the greatest, greatest frauds ever perpetrated by any government in history. The current U.S. president demands that world hunger must be fought, with American gene-modified food, no less, to the delight of the biotech companies. There was even laughter at the idea at a, at a luncheon table of the idea that was now, just then, coming out about how 
It was going to help the poor people and the poor nations of the world. It was a cynical uh, uh, laughter and joking about that notion. For the sake of a continent threatened by famine, I urge the European governments to end their opposition to biotechnology. The, the concept that genetically modified crops are needed to feed the world is not only a terrible spin and lie, it actually works against feeding the world. It gives the impression, first of all, that production is the key point in feeding the world, when in fact we have more food per person than any time in human history, and 30,000 people die every day from starvation. So it's not production. The second thing is, genetically modified crops, on the average, don't increase yield. They actually decrease yield so far. Um, it's basically a public relations spin, and it sort of creates this moral dilemma for those who are against the technology to feel, well, how, well, how can I be against the technology if it'll help starving people? UN Special Correspondent John Ziegler recalls the resistance to gene technology at the highest political levels. Monsanto totale Aggressivität, auch diffamierend, über natürlich ihre Leute in der amerikanischen Regierung, das habe ich erlebt. Ich wurde dann in der Generalversammlung in New York in no im November vom amerikanischen Botschafter sich am Sief äh, ganz massiv angegriffen, beschumpfen, gesagt, ich bin verantwortlich für die Hungertoten äh, in Sambia. Ziegler had dared to criticize Monsanto for wanting to import genetically modified seed into the African country under the pretense of delivering aid supplies, despite legislation there forbidding it. 75% der Bevölkerung, vor allem in, in Schwarzafrika, leben im Elend. Wenn dazu noch die Finanzknechtschaft der Patentmogule käme, dann wäre es um diese Völker geschehen. In the USA, pig breeders like Jerry Roseman have other problems. Environmental activist Jeffrey Smith wants to help them because Roseman has lost his entire operation. He thinks it has something to do with the feed. For years, he fed his animals only genetically modified corn. The, the females, the pigs, ultimately, they were, they, we had three outcomes. They were either sterile, they were in the true false preg pseudo pregnancies, or they delivered a bag of water. And either way, there was zero output and 100% expenses going into these animals. So, what was the upshot of all these problems? Um, the end result here was is that I, I could not incur the debt anymore. I couldn't couldn't pay back. We lost right at a million dollars with this thing. I lost my farm and my livelihood. The former pig farmer says that his attempts to have the genetically modified feed tested were blocked by massive opposition. I was totally appalled at, at the treatment that I received from the USDA, the EPA, and the FDA at the national levels and at the state levels. Everyone tried to make this go under the floor. Their comments from the seed corn company was is that we will... Uh, Ignore Jerry Roseman and he eventually he will starve and go away and the problem will no longer exist. Not only at Monsanto, but all over the world, genetic researchers are studying the pig. Munich professor Eckhard Wolf has observed during the last 10 to 15 years a significant decline in the fertility of pigs and cows during exactly the same period in which they have been given more and more genetically modified feed. Does genetically engineered corn play a role here, for example in the Roseman case? Es hängt natürlich davon ab, in welcher Weise dieser Mais gentechnisch verändert ist. Aber wenn es sich beispielsweise um BT-Mais handelt, äh, der trägt ja ein Gen, was gegen einen äh, Parasiten letztendlich äh, wirksam ist, äh, könnte ich jetzt keinen direkten Zusammenhang zur Fruchtbarkeit mir vorstellen. Wolf studies are co-financed by the industry. The German company BASF is hoping to obtain a lucrative patent, just like Monsanto. The genetic scientists can't imagine that unknown protein compounds in the genetically modified feed products could be responsible for the decline in births. Es ist sicher nicht vollständig auszuschließen. Auf der anderen Seite denke ich, dass beim Monitoring solcher neuen Sorten auch Proteinmuster natürlich erfasst werden. But that is exactly what doesn't always happen. 
we need only think of the ex-Monsanto employee Azevedo, who reports that products with utterly unknown protein compounds were allowed to enter the food chain. Monsanto introduced the first genetically modified hormone for animals, bovine growth hormone. And what we know now is that the research appeared to be rigged to avoid finding problems. When they wanted to show that the hormone did not interfere with fertility in cows, they allegedly added cows to the study that were pregnant prior to injection. Other researchers pasteurized the milk 120 times longer than normal to try and destroy the hormone. The introduction of a hormone to boost milk production in cows shows the kind of massive pressure exerted to launch new products on the market. In Washington, Jeffrey Smith meets with a former inspector at the FDA, Richard Burroughs. The man is a true patriot with children serving in the U.S. Army. Nevertheless, he refused to license the genetic product because the examiners found the test strips from Monsanto insufficient and demanded new ones. I mean, they could have come in and argued the science of it at a higher level and gotten it taken care of, but for some reason, since I guess I was the obstacle that had asked them to do these extra studies, which were not completed to my satisfaction, it was easier to get rid of me than it was to do the studies, and a whole lot cheaper. So somewhere in the chain of command, they made this point, and that person listened to the money and the politics and uh, agreed that it, the best way was to get rid of me and uh, keep the products. That was how they finally got me out of the end stages of the review process. They finally said, well, you're no longer competent to do your job, you're, you're fired. Obstacles are placed in the path of the press as well. Popular reporter Jane Acri researched for Fox News the side effects of the bovine growth hormone, such as udder infections and pus residues in the milk. We found that uh, there is a difference in the milk. Monsanto says there isn't, but there is. Their own studies show that the milk has a higher spin-off hormone called IGF-1, which is a very potent growth hormone. It's found in, in mother's milk. It helps babies grow. It also helps cancerous cells grow. It helps all cells grow. On the Friday before the Monday air date, it was going to air on the 6 o'clock news. It was a five-part series called The Mystery in Your Milk. Uh, Monsanto sent uh, the first of two very strongly worded letters that said, stop the reports, your reporters are idiots, their sources are incompetent. And, and a week later, they sent a second letter from a New York lawyer that said that there would be dire consequences for Fox News if the story airs. The reporter is called off the story. Her superiors decide that the report first has to be revised by the Fox News lawyers and Monsanto. The lawyers would say, you know, say what Monsanto says. It doesn't matter what you found. Put in this. Don't wor use the word cancer. What ended up being a, uh, a re-review process went into eight months and 83 different versions of this story which is unheard of, nobody does that. The end result of this eight months of re-editing the piece was that they fired us at the first window in our contract. The hormone is still on the market in the United States, and pigs all over the world are today fed primarily feed made from genetically modified plants. Trucks with genetically engineered soy meal are on the roads around the clock, like here in the port of Fredericia in Denmark. Per Digge imports the animal feed from Argentina. He has now been sued for patent violations by Monsanto. In Argentina, the biotech giant introduced its genetically modified plant on a grand scale, according to its familiar pattern. But it was unable to obtain a patent or demand licensing fees there. Since the company does have a patent in Europe, however, it wants to collect the fees here after the fact. The Danish importers are appalled and refuse to pay. They see themselves as a pawn in an economic power struggle. Argentinian patent law does not allow for the patenting of genetically engineered organisms. And the country has so far managed to stand up to the political pressure coming from North America. At have a GMO-free production in Denmark is jo faktisk ikke uh, muligt i dag. Og vi kan med gode eksempler fra Sverige og Norge og Finland, hvor de har GMO-fri produktion. Uh, I svineproduktionen uh, har de store problemer i de lande. Det skyldes primært, at uh, den mere pris, man skal betale for at få GMO-fri søger, 
er steget år efter år. Det går kun i en retning, og det skyldes igen, at den GMO-frie søjerproduktion i Sydamerika og Nordamerika øh, udgør efterhånden så lille en del af den samlede produktion. Så mulighederne for at øh, få den GMO-frie vare ud til en fornuftig pris øh, bliver ringere og ringere. Øh, Omkostningen til sporbarhedssikkerhedsstillelse og, og lignende stiger simpelthen voldsomt. The Danish importer knows that the penetration of whole regions with genetically modified feed is irreversible. Proving that pig feed is biologically pure is virtually impossible to finance. And the fear remains that, to top it all off, they could lose the lawsuit against Monsanto. On the way to the slaughterhouse. Pumped full of genetically modified feed. The meat doesn't even have to be labeled as such when it comes onto the market. The long-term consequences for the consumer remain to be seen. But Monsanto's intention is clear, a patent on pig genes. And what's next after that? Will any risk be avoided in the future? Monsanto and some of these companies have something very different in mind. They don't want to change their technology to fit life. They want to alter life so it fits their technology and their profit. Yeah, maybe you can uh, genetically engineer the pig to, uh, uh, to be better if they use the genetically engineered products and, and you just have an inline monopoly on this. Yeah, sure, that, that can happen. These pigs should not be forced to eat genetically modified feed, nor should their offspring later be genetically engineered. Jetzt wir schauen jetzt bei der Luise, das ist eine unserer ältesten Tiere hier mit einer ganzen Herde Ferkel und bei der wollen wir uns auch mal schauen, ob an diesem alt angestammten schwäbischen Schwein aus einer alten Linie auch diese Gene mit drin vorkommen. So. Einmal. Zweimal. Christoph Zimmer dares to test his own pigs. He has hesitated for a long time to test them for the gene marker for which Monsanto is claiming a patent. Monsanto is not alone. In laboratories around the world, the race is on for patented pig DNA. Thanks to the help from the Chinese, the Danish have already made a great deal of progress, as have the Germans. If a company succeeds at exercising near total control over pig breeding, thanks to a wide-ranging patent, it could legally begin to genetically engineer the animals as well, something that Monsanto has already done with plants. A nightmare for nature conservationists, a lucrative vision for industry. Man kann sich durchaus vorstellen, dass man analog zur Pflanzenbiotechnologie auch äh, für die tierische Produktion eben fremde Gene in, in äh, Tiere einschleust. A way to simply correct small flaws of nature in order to boost production. And the result? The super pig. Ich glaube nicht, dass es das Superschwein geben wird. Es wird möglicherweise mehrere Superschweine geben, die eben entsprechend den jeweiligen Produktionsbedingungen und auch den Anforderungen der Märkte ähm, optimal produzieren können. If there only weren't that annoying problem of the declining birth rate among pigs and cattle. Genetic scientist Wolf, who doesn't believe the culprit can be genetically modified feed, has launched a new experiment with cows. Die Kiki trägt ein zusätzliches Gen, das ursprünglich aus einer Qualle kommt. Dieses Gen kodiert für ein grün fluoreszierendes Protein oder abgekürzt GFP. Wenn wir sie jetzt bei Dunkelheit mit blauem Licht anleuchten würden, wird sie tatsächlich eine grüne Schnauze haben. Für uns ist die Kiki deswegen interessant, weil wir für, von ihr Embryonen erzeugen können, die ebenfalls grün fluoreszieren. Und diese Embryonen können wir dann in einem sehr frühen Stadium im weiblichen Geschlechtstrakt lokalisieren und können so Wechselwirkungen zwischen dem Embryo und dem Muttertier sehr gut äh, untersuchen. In the USA, environmental activist Jeffrey Smith has heard about another experiment. He therefore pays another visit to Jerry Roseman, the ruined pig farmer. Roseman is disappointed with himself and with the fact that he believed the promises of the genetically modified feed producers. I tried to do the right thing. You know, I was, I was one of the technology people. You know, I was right on the cutting edge of everything for the farm, you know, because this is what we were told to do. And ultimately, you know, they lied to us. We were told that these products were safe when we were handed them to us. And ultimately, I found out that there's virtually no testing. 
and anyone that comes up with any kind of a problem whatsoever with it, there's absolutely no cooperation other than to bury them in paper and make them go away. Now Roseman is doing the tests himself without outside help. He has been able to squirrel away some of the genetically modified corn which he is now occasionally feeding to a few cattle. And these animals four years ago were sterile. We got them off of the corn, got them on green grass, and they were reproduced fine. This last winter I went ahead and started to experiment again and fed them the, the problematic corn here. And at the present time these four, three cows are barren and the bull is basically sterile. And that was after feeding the corn to them for approximately 90 days. And here next week we'll take them back off of the corn and eventually the, the bull will come back to being viral and the cows most likely will, will conceive a calf for next year. And this is what I've determined myself here with, with the limited funding that I can do my, myself. Die ganz kleinen Züchter werden bis auf wenige Ausnahmen in der Tat wahrscheinlich aussterben. Only a few consortiums will remain as winners in the battle of the pig. This is what Christoph Zimmer fears. But he wants to make life difficult for them for as long as he can. He visits the test laboratory to find out here whether his own livestock could be affected by Monsanto's patent application. Die Ergebnisse zeigen, dass die ähm, Varianten, die in dem Patent beschrieben sind, schon jetzt in der Natur vorkommen. In ihrer Herde finden wir alle drei möglichen Varianten, TT, CT und CC. Könnte ich dann hinterher bei Ihnen im Labor beweisen, dass ich nicht nach der Methode von Monsanto gezüchtet habe? Das ist der springende Punkt, das geht nicht mehr. Die Nachkommen ähm, der getesteten Tiere sind nicht zu unterscheiden von den Tieren, die Sie hier schon in Ihrer Herde haben. Farmer Zimmer's only hope is that the patent application is denied. Worldwide, the monopolization has already long begun, silently and swiftly. Als wenn mich das jemand gefragt hätte vor fünf oder vor zehn Jahren, hätte ich gesagt, das ist unmöglich. Wie kann sich jemand einen entsprechenden Anspruch bloß herausnehmen? Wenn wir uns jetzt aber anschauen, in welchen Abhängigkeiten gerade in den USA die Farmen schon sind von diesem Konzern, dann ist es nicht mehr etwas, worüber man lachen kann, sondern dann ist das wirklich zum Heulen. Thank you.